With the orders getting stored, now it's time to fetch them when we visit the orders screen. And for that, let's go to the orders start file because here I wanna add, well, just as I had in the product start file, I wanna add a fetch and set method here to fetch and set the orders. It will eventually yield a future, which will then yield nothing. I'll call it fetch and set orders, but the name is up to you. And of course, I wanna use the async keyword here so that we can work with async await. Now for the URL. The URL, of course, is that URL where we stored our orders. And now we can use a get request here to send it to that URL to get these orders. So that gets us a response. And for the moment, I simply print the decoded version of the response body so that we can see what's in there. And here we should await to wait for that to resolve to really have the response object in there. So that's a basic setup and we'll of course fine tune this to really extract and store the data. Let's now fire this fetch and set orders method from inside the orders screen. Now this is a stateless widget, so we can't use init state or did change dependencies. So the first thing I'll actually have to do here is we have to convert this to a state full widget. With a state full widget, now we can go ahead and either use init state with that future delayed hack, if you remember, I showed it earlier, or use did change dependencies. Now I'll use the future delayed hack here because in the past I used a different approach and I wanna show both. And in there, we use future delayed, which is a constructor that gives us a new future. And we pass in a duration that should pass until this future automatically resolves. And here, duration zero is a special value which instantly resolves this, but the way Dart works, this still only executes after this initialization is done here, because it all happens simultaneously, but this is queued at the end, so to say. So now here we can add then, and we should add then. Don't turn this into an async function here. It's not something you should do because by default it's not async. By default it doesn't return a future. You shouldn't turn it into a function that does. So instead use then here. You get a value which is void, but you still need to accept it. And then in here you can go ahead and send that request to fetch orders. So for that you need the provider and you need your orders from the order start file. So that here we can say provider of orders context and listen false because I only want to dispatch this fetching action. I don't want to listen to updates here because of that. So here I just want to call fetch and set orders and be done with it. And then down there, of course, we do set up a listener to orders and that is all fine, but here I don't want to uh, set up another one, so to say. If we now do a full refresh and we visit this orders page, we should actually make that request. And that's looking good. Here's the output. And again, you see we get a map where we have that auto-generated ID as a key and then a nested map with our order data. And that data also then happens to have a nested list with our card item maps. So a couple of nested elements. And now we'll have to extract this to then rebuild a order item that looks like this, which has a list of nested card items and all these values, so that in the end we have a list of these order items, which we can use to overwrite this list with it. So let's get started with that. Here I'll create a little helper list, which will be full of order items, which I'll name loaded orders, which initially is empty. And then I wanna go through my extracted uh, response body. So here I'll have my extracted data and that's in the end JSON decode response body. So what we just printed. Now we should let Dart know that this will be of type map with string keys and dynamic values just as we did it in the product start file. And with that we can use the extracted data with for each to go through all our keys and values in that map or we of course know that the keys are the order IDs and the values, well, that's our order data in the end. And now we add items to our loaded orders with add. And now in there, let's create a order item. And that order item will have an ID, which is our order ID we're getting here. So, so that key in that map. And besides that, we of course have an amount 
And we get that from the order data, which is a map as we know, which will have an amount key. We can see it here. We'll also need the date time. And here we wanna create a new date time. We can do that with date time parse. And parse now takes a string, which has to have that ISO 8601 format. That's why I saved it as such a string here before we sent it to the web. Now we're retrieving such a string and therefore here we can parse order data and then here date time. So this key and this value and this can now be parsed into a date time object again. Let me restructure this. And now of course the products. Now for the products, we know that we have a list in here. So order data product, so for the products key, for this key, is a list. We know that. So that's a list of dynamic values in the end. So let's wrap this into parentheses because now we can call map on this to convert it into a list of card items. As always, you need to call to list here at the end to convert it into a list. But now in the map function here, you get your items or whatever you want to name it. And here I'll return my new card items like this. And now every card item has an ID, but item here is in the end just a map, right? We know that it is a map and it has an ID here. So we can use that ID. And that's still my custom dummy ID because we never save card items to the server. Hence we have only these IDs. Doesn't matter too much though, because we never work with these IDs. So here, I access item ID. Besides that, our card items also have a price and we get that from item for the price key, right? Because we have that price key in there. We also of course have a quantity. Hence here I access item for the quantity key. So this key. And last but not least, we also have the title in there. So let's add title here and access item for the title key. So this now creates card items, to be precise, a list of card items based on the items we find here. And then we use this as a value for the products key. And this recreates in the end our loaded orders. So down here, we're done with that. And we can now set our orders here equal to the loaded orders. And then of course call notify listeners to make sure that our UI updates in all places. And uh, this should be all. If we now save that, if we revisit this orders page, it should actually load our orders from the web and display them, and it does. Now what if we have no orders? So if I delete that orders node here on Firebase, what if I now go back and I revisit this page? It still has the old orders in memory, but we now also have an error here. And the error is that for each was called on null. The problem is that I'm calling for each here on the extracted data, even though we got no extracted data because we didn't return anything from the back and from the server because no orders were stored there. So actually as an improvement, you should check if extracted data is equal to null. And if it is, return here so that this code does not run if extracted data is null. And by the way, you want to do the same for products if we have no products. There, before we call extracted data for each, we should check if extracted data is equal to null, and if it is, return, and don't execute any other code. So return here to avoid that you run code which would fail if you have no data. So do that in the product start file and also in the order start file. With that, if we now do a full refresh, now we should be able to revisit the orders screen here without errors. Now let's actually place another order here by ordering that maybe. Let's go here to the order screen and see it. And let's now actually add a loading spinner because of course when we're in the app the data is immediately there because it's then already stored here in our order start file. But let's make sure we show a loading spinner when we first load that page. For that in the orders screen here we have a stateful widget. I'll add the is loading property and set this to false initially. Here, I'll call 
set state and set is loading to true. Set state to update the UI because this will actually run after build was called. Even though it's delayed by nothing, the whole other flow of init state finishing up and build being called will have finished when this runs. So we need to run set state here to, well, do this. Then also turn this into an async method here and await fetch and set orders. This now may be async because it's just a function we pass to then, not in its state. Setting this to async is not something I would recommend. And then also, of course, after you waited for the response, set this back to false here. So now with that, we can display a loading spinner here instead of the list by checking is loading. And if we are loading, again, I'll have that centered circular progress indicator all built into Flutter and only show the list view if we're not loading. So now if we do a full refresh, let's visit the orders page. And we see the loading spinner. If we now revisit this, it again gets loaded again and we see the loading spinner again, therefore. So with that, we're also fetching our orders. Let's now place one other order, maybe for this here, for the book, to see whether that also works. Should have two orders now. And one thing you'll see now, however, is that the order is wrong. It's now ordered with the oldest order on top. Now, previously we had a different order and that can easily be fixed by going to the order start file. And here where we set orders equal to loaded orders, you can call reversed and then to list. And this will reverse the list and simply, well, store the reversed list here. So now this is also up to date and shows the newest order first. That's just a tiny thing. But with that, I'd say we have a decent application here, which has all the features we would want of it. And we're able to add items, edit items, view items, change the favorite status, place orders and view our orders now.